Grab a pen and paper, get ready to test your knowledge, and let's get started. What is the minimum distance you must maintain from a fire hydrant when parking your vehicle in Ontario? A. 1.5 meters. B. 2.5 meters. C. 3 meters. D. 5 meters. Answer C. 3 meters. In Ontario, you must park your vehicle at least 3 meters away from a fire hydrant. This allows for adequate space for fire trucks and emergency personnel to access the hydrant in case of an emergency. When approaching a stopped school bus with its red lights flashing, what is the minimum distance you must stop behind the bus? A. 5 meters B. 10 meters C. 15 meters D. 20 meters Answer D. 20 meters in Ontario, drivers must stop at least 20 meters behind a stopped school bus with its red lights flashing. This ensures the safety of children getting on and off the bus and allows them enough space to cross the road if necessary. What are the penalties for AG1 driver if caught driving unaccompanied by a qualified driver with at least four years of driving experience? A. A fine of up to $1,000. B. 30-day license suspension. C. Both A and B. D. No penalties, just a warning. Answer. C. Both A and B. Explanation. G1 drivers in Ontario must be accompanied by a qualified driver with at least four years of driving experience. If caught driving unaccompanied, they can face a fine of up to $1,000 and a 30-day license suspension. At an intersection with no stop signs or traffic signals, which vehicle has the right of way? A. The vehicle on the left. B. The vehicle on the right. C. The vehicle that arrives first. D. The vehicle that is moving faster. Answer. B. The vehicle on the right. In Ontario, at an intersection with no stop signs or traffic signals, the vehicle on the right has the right of way. This rule is known as the right-hand rule and helps prevent collisions at intersections. What is the maximum legal blood alcohol concentration for G1 drivers in Ontario? A. 0% B. 0.05% C. 0.08% D. G1 drivers are not allowed to consume alcohol. Answer A. 0% Explanation G1 drivers in Ontario must maintain a blood alcohol concentration, BAC, of 0% while driving. This is known as the Zero BAC rule and is in place to ensure the safety of novice drivers and other road users. What should you do if you approach a railroad crossing with flashing red lights and the gates are lowered? A. Stop, then proceed if the way is clear. B. Stop and wait until the lights stop flashing and the gates raise. C. Drive around the lowered gates if no train is in sight. D. Speed up to cross before the train arrives. Answer B. When approaching a railroad crossing with flashing red lights and lowered gates, you must stop and wait until the lights stop flashing and the gates raise. This indicates that the train has passed and it is now safe to cross. How should you adjust your side mirrors to eliminate blind spots? A. Adjust them so you can see the rear tires of your vehicle. B. Adjust them so you can see the sides of your vehicle. C. Adjust them so you cannot see the sides of your vehicle but can see vehicles in adjacent lanes. D. Adjust them so they point downward to see the curb. Answer. C. To eliminate blind spots, you should adjust your side mirrors so you cannot see the sides of your vehicle but can see vehicles in adjacent lanes. This will maximize your field of vision and help you detect vehicles in your blind spots. When are you legally required to use your headlights in Ontario? A. Between 30 minutes before sunset and 30 minutes after sunrise. B. Between 30 minutes after sunset and 30 minutes before sunrise. C. Between 1 hour before sunset and 1 hour after sunrise. D. Whenever visibility is less than 150 meters. Answer B. In Ontario, you are legally required to use your headlights between 30 minutes after sunset and 30 minutes before sunrise. 
This ensures that you have adequate visibility and can be seen by other drivers during periods of low light. What is the minimum following distance you should maintain behind a large vehicle or motorcycle on a dry road? A. 1 second. B. 2 seconds. C. 2 or more seconds. D. More than 5 seconds. Answer C. Whenever you follow another vehicle, you need enough space to stop safely if the other vehicle breaks suddenly. A safe following distance is at least 2 seconds behind the vehicle in front of you. This lets you see around the vehicle ahead and gives you enough distance to stop suddenly. In Ontario, what is the maximum speed limit on roads within a city, town, or built-up area, unless otherwise posted? A. 40 km per hour B. 50 km per hour C. 60 km per hour D. 80 km per hour Answer B. In Ontario, the maximum speed limit on roads within a city, town, or built-up area, unless otherwise posted, is 50 km per hour. It is important to follow speed limits to ensure the safety of all road users. When making a left turn from a one-way street onto another one-way street you should a. Turn from the left lane onto the left lane b. Turn from the right lane onto the right lane c. Turn from the left lane onto the right lane d. Turn from any lane onto any lane Answer a. When making a left turn from a one-way street onto another one-way street, you should turn from the left lane onto the left lane, ensuring a smooth and safe transition between the two roads. What is the maximum speed limit on Ontario highways, unless posted otherwise? A. 80 km per hour B. 90 km per hour C. 100 km per hour D. 120 km per hour. Answer C. The maximum speed limit on Ontario highways, unless posted otherwise, is 100 km per hour. However, this may vary depending on specific highways, construction zones, or urban areas. When approaching a stopped emergency vehicle with its lights flashing on a multi-lane highway, what should you do? A. Speed up to pass the emergency vehicle. B. Slow down and move to a lane away from the emergency vehicle if safe to do so. C. Keep driving at the same speed and maintain your lane. D. Stop immediately, regardless of your lane or speed. Answer B. According to Ontario law, when approaching a stopped emergency vehicle with its lights flashing on a multi-lane highway, you should slow down, maintaining a safe speed and move to a lane away from the emergency vehicle if it is safe to do so. This is known as the Move Over Law and helps protect emergency responders at the roadside. What does a flashing yellow traffic light signal indicate? A. Proceed with caution. B. Stop if it is safe to do so. C. Pedestrians have the right of way. D. The traffic light is about to turn red. Answer A. Proceed with caution. A flashing yellow traffic light signal indicates that drivers should proceed with caution. Be prepared for any potential hazards, such as vehicles or pedestrians entering the intersection. When passing a cyclist, what is the minimum safe distance you should maintain between your vehicle and the cyclist? A. 0.5 meters. B. 1 meter. C. 1.5 meters. D. 2 meters. Answer B. 1 meter. When passing a cyclist, drivers must maintain a minimum distance of 1 meter between their vehicle and the cyclist, where it is practical to do so. In a roundabout, who has the right of way? A. Vehicles entering the roundabout. B. Vehicles already in the roundabout. C. Pedestrians crossing the road. D. There is no specific rule. Answer B. Vehicles already in the roundabout. In a roundabout, vehicles already in the roundabout have the right of way. Drivers entering the roundabout must yield to traffic already circulating and wait for a safe gap before entering. What is the purpose of a no exit sign? A. To indicate a dead end street. B. To warn drivers of a one way street. C. 
to notify drivers of a road closed ahead. D. To alert drivers that there is no parking allowed. Answer A. To indicate a dead-end street. A no-exit sign indicates a dead-end street, which means there is no through access for vehicles. Drivers must turn around or exit the way they entered. What is the purpose of a diamond-shaped traffic sign? A. To indicate a construction zone. B. To provide information about nearby facilities. C. To warn drivers of upcoming hazards or conditions. D. To indicate a regulatory requirement or prohibition. Answer. C. To warn drivers of upcoming hazards or conditions. Diamond-shaped traffic signs are used to warn drivers of upcoming hazards or conditions, such as sharp curves, slippery roads, or school zones. These signs alert drivers to potential dangers so they can adjust their speed and driving behavior accordingly. In Ontario, how many demerit points will be added to your driving record for failing to stop for a school bus with its upper red lights flashing? A. 3 points. B. 5 points. C. 6 points. D. 8 points. Answer. C. 6 points. In Ontario, Failing to stop for a school bus with its upper red lights flashing results in six demerit points being added to your driving record. This violation also comes with a substantial fine and potential license suspension. Question 20. If you are involved in a collision and someone is injured, what is your legal responsibility? A. Call the police and wait for them to arrive. B. Provide your name, address and insurance information to the injured person. C. Render assistance and report the collision to the police within 24 hours. D. Take the injured person to the nearest hospital. Answer C. If you are involved in a collision and someone is injured, your legal responsibility is to render assistance to the injured person and report the collision to the police within 24 hours. You should also exchange your name, address, and insurance information with the other parties involved in the collision. In Ontario, what is the penalty for not wearing a seatbelt as a driver or passenger? A. $100 fine. B. $200 fine. C. $200 fine and 2 demerit points. D. $500 fine and 3 demerit points. Answer C. If convicted, you will face... Fines between $200 and $1,000 including two demerit points you can also be fined for having a broken seatbelt, even if it is not being used when you're stopped by a police officer. If a traffic signal turns red while you are in the middle of an intersection waiting to turn left, what should you do? A. Stop at the intersection and wait for the next green light. B. Reverse to the stop line. C. Complete your turn when safe. D. Abandon the turn and proceed straight. Answer C. Complete your turn when safe. If a traffic signal turns red while you are in the middle of an intersection waiting to turn left, you should complete your turn when it is safe to do so. Clear the intersection to avoid obstructing traffic. When parallel parking, how far away should your vehicle be from the curb? A. Within 5 centimeters. B. Within 12 inches, 30 centimeters. C. Within 18 inches, 45 centimeters. D. Within 24 inches, 60 centimeters. Answer B. Within 12 inches, 30 centimeters. When parallel parking, your vehicle should be within 12 inches, 30 centimeters, of the curb. Parking too far from the curb can obstruct traffic and create a hazard for other drivers. What should you do if you encounter a cyclist on the road while driving? A. Speed up and pass them quickly. B. Honk your horn to alert them of your presence. C. Share the lane with the cyclist. D. Slow down and maintain at least one meter, three feet, distance when passing. Answer D. When encountering a cyclist on the road, slow down and maintain at least one meter, three feet, of distance when passing them. This ensures the safety of both the cyclist and other road users. What is the purpose of a no-zone around large vehicles like trucks and buses? A. 
to indicate the areas where the driver has limited or no visibility. B. To show the designated parking area for these vehicles. C. To mark the space required for turning. D. To indicate that passing is not allowed. Answer A. The no zone around large vehicles like trucks and buses refers to the areas where the driver has limited or no visibility. It is crucial for other drivers to avoid lingering in these blind spots, as the driver of the large vehicle may not be aware of their presence. When approaching a merge lane on a highway, what should drivers do? A. Speed up and merge as quickly as possible. B. Slow down and wait for a gap in traffic. C. Stop at the end of the merge lane and wait for an opening. D. Adjust their speed and merge smoothly when safe. Answer D. When approaching a merge lane on a highway, drivers should adjust their speed to match the flow of traffic and merge smoothly when it is safe to do so. Abruptly speeding up, slowing down, or stopping can create dangerous situations and disrupt the flow of traffic. When making a right turn at a red traffic light, what should drivers do? A. Turn immediately without stopping. B. Stop and wait for a green light. C. Stop, check for traffic and pedestrians, and proceed when safe. D. Turn only if there is a sign permitting it. Answer C. When making a right turn at a red traffic light, drivers should first come to a complete stop, check for oncoming traffic and pedestrians, and then proceed with the turn when it is safe to do so. Always obey any signs indicating that right turns on red are prohibited. When approaching a yield sign, what should you do? A. Stop completely before proceeding. B. Slow down and proceed with caution. C. Give the right of way to oncoming traffic and pedestrians. D. Speed up to merge with traffic. Answer C. When approaching a yield sign, drivers must give the right of way to oncoming traffic and pedestrians. Slow down or stop if necessary, and proceed only when it is safe to do so. What is the correct hand signal for indicating a right turn? A. Left arm straight out of the window, pointing upward. B. Left arm straight out of the window, pointing downward. C. Left arm straight out of the window, pointing to the right. D. Right arm straight out of the window, pointing to the right. Answer A. To indicate a right turn using hand signals, extend your left arm straight out of the window with your hand pointing upward. This is an alternative to using your vehicle's turn signal lights, typically used when those lights are not functioning. What should you do if your vehicle starts to hydroplane on a wet road? A. Apply the brakes firmly. B. Steer in the direction of the skid. C. Accelerate to regain traction. D. Ease off the accelerator and maintain a straight course. Answer D. If your vehicle starts to hydroplane on a wet road, you should ease off the accelerator and maintain a straight course. Applying the brakes firmly or trying to steer during hydroplaning can cause you to lose control of your vehicle. Gradually slowing down allows your tires to regain traction with the road surface.